Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try to fix up this cheap Fusion laptop here. So although it's a cheap laptop, it is actually a relatively new laptop. I've never heard of this brand before. I believe they're actually UK based, but they're going to be made in China. And they're budget laptops, so it's Windows 10. I think it's going to be an interesting one. So I bought it for, off eBay really, really cheap. Look, nobody was bidding on it, probably because most people don't know about it. I was the only one. It cost £20 winning bid and £6 postage, so £26 in total. And it just says on it that it charges up, but it won't power on. And look, it came with everything. I believe this is from a normal seller, not a business seller, which is good for me because it means there's more chance of me fixing it. This will be similar to maybe you guys trying it at home yourself if you have basic tools like a multimeter and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I've been plugging it in. A little light comes on here. It came with everything. It came with the charger. Is that little light on? No, that light's gone off now. So it must mean it's fully charged because earlier on when I plugged it in, it came up with uh, a little light. So uh, yeah, hopefully that's fully charged now. So when we open it up, if I go to turn it on here, nothing happens. So it's not turning on whatsoever. So we'll take it apart and we'll see what's going on with it. Let me just show you around the box and show you the spec of it and stuff like that. So we have two things down here. I presume these are going to be speakers. It just says here, designed by Fusion 5 in UK, assembled in China. And this is it here. It's a 14.1 inch. And I'll just quickly go across here and you can just uh, pause them yourself if you're interested. So it's got four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Now, it's only got a very small internal storage. You can see there is just 64 gigabytes, but you can upgrade the external, but it's still only 128 gigabytes. So I suppose this would be more useful for just keeping small files and just browsing the internet rather than having, uh, obviously, games and stuff like that on it. Quad core. And it's got mini HDMI out, two USB ports, Bluetooth and also uh, Wi-Fi, BG and N. Right, let's uh, let's get it over to the blue mat, take it apart, and maybe see if we can follow the voltage, maybe from the battery or from the charger, see if we can see what's going on. I'm really looking forward to this one. All right, let's get started. So first things first, I know the light was coming on with the charger, but let's just see, make sure we have actually got voltage in here. Someone volts DC. Yeah, there you go, five volts, yeah. And it says here, five volts, three amps. So it looks like the power adapter is okay. So let's take the back off and see if we can see anything obvious. Now while I'm doing that, let's give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. This month that consists of Saturnine Cinema, Operational 117, KitDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Stephen Kilgore, Chris Seal, and the My Mate Vince fan club. Ah, now look here guys, good news. It's got a little warranty sticker and it hasn't been opened before. That is brilliant for me because it could still be a nightmare of a fault, but it might be something more straightforward. I'm really happy about that. I had a feeling when I bought this, especially when it came with the charger and the box and everything, that it was just from a normal, normal seller. I believe you can buy these for around about 200 UK pounds on places like Amazon. Okay, so it looks like it's also clipped in. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Right. Huge battery. Okay, now what's going on here? Looks like the battery terminals come over this way. Surely that's not soldered straight onto the board, is it? It's hard to tell because it's covered in gunk. Let's see if I can just loosen it up a little bit. I'm gonna have to use a bit of IPA on it to try and get rid of all that stickiness. Well, I can now see more clearly and I can see that it is one that you have to pull up. So let's, uh, oh, I've just stabbed myself. Nice. Well, there you go, I've disconnected it now anyway. So that's, uh, that's good. 
Okay, let's, uh, I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna plug the charger back in with the battery disconnected. And now let's see if it attempts to turn on. So we plug it in here. Oh, listen to the speakers. Listen to that. Oh, I like it, and look at the blue light. I can see a blue light flashing. So it's doing something different now. Let's try and turn it on. Now, is there anything to the blue flashing? So it's one long one, hold on. Oh no, it's just random. Okay, well hold on now. Now that it's doing something different, just in case it needs some sort of like BIOS reset or something, let's, uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's hold down the power button to try and drain any power from it. Then we'll plug the battery back in and see if it, uh, if it comes to life. Right. right, let's plug back in now. Ho oh, ho, we got a blue light. Is it gonna turn on? But why would we have a blue light when it's not uh, when it's not plugged in? It's still not turning on. Right, hold on, let's hold it down. Now. No, still not doing anything. Right, let's plug it in. Blue light comes on and then goes off. That's what it did before. Right, okay, so it's still the same fault as before. Interesting though, that it was making that funky beat when that uh, battery was unplugged. Because I know sometimes laptops and PCs will let you know if the RAM's faulty by like a series of flashes. But the problem is that seems random because it would come on and then it would do loads of different flashes and then it would come on again, but then there didn't seem to be any kind of uh, sequence to it. Right, so now let's uh, let's undo this here. Hold on a minute. Is this the board here? Is that all it is, this little bit here? Oh my, wow. Hmm, so is this more like kind of a tablet, but in a, a, a laptop form? So these are like the thermal pads on these two here. So I was sort of thinking it would be more like a traditional laptop where you could change the RAM and stuff, but it's not, it's more like a, a tablet. So I think, I think this is gonna be harder. I don't know if this is actually now gonna be fixable thinking about it. Oh, that's a shame, didn't spend much money on it anyway. All right, let's, uh, let's zoom in right here, see if we can see anything. Power in here. Probably the main uh, the main Intel. Would that be the Intel chip there? Oh no, would this be? Sand oh, so that must be the that must be the memory. Well, I'll tell you what we'll what we'll do. Let's see if there's a short on the USB port. Oh, this is USB 3 here, isn't it? Because it's a blue one. That's interesting. Right, let's see if the pins there are short into ground. Right, that one is, but I don't know if that's supposed to be, if that is a ground or not. I think I need to take this little board out. I'm not happy that there's two there that are short into ground. Let's go over here, because this is USB 2. Over this side. Right, so that's gonna be the power in, that's gonna be the ground. Okay. Those ones are okay. I think what we should do is, let's disconnect some of the things in case, for example, the little board that goes over this side here to the uh, where I just showed you the USB 2, that could be putting a fault on it. The screen could be putting a fault on it. I presume that's going down to the keyboard. The keyboard could be putting a fault on it. So I think what we'll do is, let's uh, disconnect everything apart from the keyboard 
and see, see if it's doing anything different. Now let's see if it, oh, blue light again. But it did that last time, didn't it? Right, now let's see. No, so unless it's the keyboard putting a fault on it, it means it's something on that board, doesn't it? Yeah, then it just goes out. Okay, we'll leave that plugged in for the moment. Now let's, what should I do now? So we will take this little board out in case there's something obvious on the other side. It doesn't look like there's any sign of water damage or any corrosion or anything on this side here. Do you know what, just, just in case, I've now undone the keyboard. I won't be able to turn it on because I don't know which pins to short, but I can put the battery back in and see if the blue light does anything different. No, okay, right, I think I've done the sort of basic tests that I need to do. So that says to me it's a problem with this board here. Let's get it out. Well, it doesn't look like we've got a short between the live and the ground. Just gonna get an ohms test on that. 0.5 mega ohms, right, so that, I think that looks okay. So it's like it's coming up on that pin, but also over here as well. I'm just gonna check for some shorts around the capacitors. Well, I didn't go across every single one, but I went across most of them, and uh, there's no shorts there. Well, we know it's completely dead, don't we? But yet it takes power from the battery this side and power from the jack this side. So surely they have to meet somewhere to determine whether, there has to be like a, a, two MOSFETs or something somewhere to determine, otherwise what could happen is the, uh, the battery power could end up going back down the the mains cable here so that there has to be going somewhere so i think what i need to do is maybe see where these pins go to see where the power jack goes to and then that might give me an idea of uh, where it goes it's just a shame because i can't physically see the traces on the board you know i know it's going from the power jack here to this chip is that the first chip or is the first chip up here somewhere? Do you see what I mean? Just because it's near it, it doesn't mean it could be going from here all the way over to here before coming back here. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna work on that for a while and then when I have more info, I'll start filming again. Okay, what I did is I took off the back here because unfortunately it's so hard to trace because for example, from this battery here, I can see that it goes through this, let's call it some sort of resistor here maybe inrush limiter or something, and then it goes to that side of the cap, but then it goes through the wires there and I can't see where it goes to. But if I flip it over, I can now see that I've removed all this. It had horrible sticky stuff all over it. But basically, if I now go from here, I now know that, see this massive rail, this whole thing here going all the way around, all the way around here, all the way around to here, that is all basically like voltage in from the battery. So it's too hard to basically trace because there's wires everywhere. But I've turned my attention back onto this one here. And from here, it definitely comes up on this little chip here. Now I've zoomed in on this chip and it is down as a W3205. And when I look at it here, it says it's an over voltage protection. The device will switch off internal MOSFETs to disconnect AC in to out to protect load when any input voltage, input current over the threshold, okay? So I've looked at the pin here and you can see we have AC in and then we've got AC in, in here and out, out. And now let me zoom right in on this chip and you can see that it does correspond to that. So I've just got my meter set to continuity. So basically from this pin here, the jack, this one here, it goes to this one here and also goes to here 
and here. So this whole rail is the input here. And then we've got ground apparently on this pin and that corresponds because if I go here, we've got here. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna go across these two pins to see if we do have voltage out. Yeah, so if we have five volts going in, I'm presuming then we're gonna have five volts coming out. So let's uh, let's do that. Let's see what we got here, 5.2. So that says to me that this chip is okay because it's passing out 5.2. Annoyingly though, this is where it starts to get difficult because this is gonna be 5.2, all this is gonna be 5.2 because this is all with each other. Yeah. But obviously now it goes through, I think, these via. So now I've got to flip the other side of the board and see where it goes to. Because I can't see anywhere uh, anywhere else here. Right, annoyingly, those vias there, just from what I can see, go to... Where are we now? Here. Yep. So as you can see, they're not going anywhere. This is the main one coming down from the battery. But look, they're not going anywhere. So this is the problem with multi-layer boards, you see. They're going on some internal traces somewhere. So I've just been probing around here and watch this. If I go between here now, these two are connected. We know that it goes to all these bits here. But look, it also comes up on this chip here, here. Yeah, nowhere else, just on that one there. And you can see it comes through the via here. So that could be the next path. Now, if we go from our battery all the way up here, so rather than going on here, just because they're delicate, I'm gonna go onto here. You can see that this is linked to here. Yeah, these ones, yeah. So from here, you can see that it also comes up on this same chip. So that one there and that one there. So now what I need to do is I need to go and see what this chip is. Maybe this is the chip that's responsible for taking the power in from here and also the power in for the battery and then working out what to do with it and maybe this is not outputting. Okay, this next chip now, this next one along, is a switching charger with dynamic power path management. So again, it's like a management IC and I've got a nice little pin out just here. So compared to the board, that's gonna be like that. Now remember earlier I said that that one there was from the AC, so that's the in and then these two are from the battery, battery, battery. So now what I need to look at is the system pin here and here. And I've just checked that one out, and whether I've got the battery on it or the, the charger, it's still coming up at about 4.5 volts, which I presume is gonna be the correct voltage to make it work. So if you look at this here now, right, so we've got the in here, and in is reading 4.5, no, five volts. That's 5.1 volts. This is out and it's reading 4.5. And then this is battery in here, and it's reading 4.3. This is out, it's reading 4.5. And this is battery in. Gotta be careful that I don't short it. 4.3. So that says to me that that chip is working. So now what I need to do is I need to follow the path from here going this way. Okay, I've been tracing different things on the board. So we've gone from this chip to this chip, and then I've been trying to trace it from there, but it's but it's hard. But what's been throwing me is the fact of these weird voltages when I have this plugged in here. You can see on my multimeter here, it's just going all over the place. And I'm not moving here, my hands are steady. But it's got me thinking, this isn't really a laptop, is it? This is more like a tablet, in my opinion. So maybe it has to have the battery connected, just like a Nintendo Switch. A Nintendo Switch will not work without a battery, even if you have the USB-C plugged into it, the, the charger plugged into it. And now look, if I go on the same capacitor, you can see the voltage is steady. So I think that was kind of throwing me a little bit, but I don't think that's anything to do with it. I was thinking maybe that the power supply was coming and going, coming and going. But you know what I haven't checked is the on and off switch. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go across all the terminals here, because this is a thing that goes up to the keyboard, because on this particular one, the on and off switch is part of the keyboard, this one here. So for all I know, the keyboard might not be working. The on and off switch might not be working. So let's uh, let's go across and see if we can see what sort of voltages we have on this here. Well, actually, first things, let's see if we have any ground on it because if I can short the pins that the on and off switch goes to, 
then uh, that will be uh, that will be good. That will bypass the keyboard. Okay, so the ones at the very end, which are just kind of like supports, they're, they're grounds. And that one there, is there any others? No. So there's only one ground, and that's one, two, three. That's the third pin along on this row here. So now let's plug these back in, and let's see what voltages we've got on these. Let's go to voltage. DC. So that's going to be the ground one there. Okay, that's a bit of voltage on that one. Right, I'm just going to go through all the others now, fast forward through it. Right, so the only one where I've got any sort of significant voltage, the others just all seem to be 0 point something, is this one next to the ground. So we have the third pin as ground, this is coming up as zero, and then we have that one there as 1 point, 1.8 volts. So let's, uh, let's plug this back into the board and uh, plug the keyboard in. Let's hit the on and off switch on and see if something happens to that 1.8 volts. Let's uh, put that to DC. What I want to do, I want to be able to hit the button and look at the meter at the same time. So I've got my finger on the on and off button, which is the top right, this one here. So I'm just going to go on the ground, see if that does anything when I press this button. Okay, so nothing's happening to my meter. Let's go on to the one with the voltage in. Oh, did that drop? Hold on. No, so f as far as I know, it, it could be, uh, could just be the button. Right, let's short those pins out because I've seen that on videos before where they short the pins out here and that's the same as turning it on. So I'm going to go between the third and the fourth, which is going to be, so what I'm doing is I'm grounding the 1.8 volts. So hold on now, hope this doesn't spark. One, two, three, four. We've got a blue light. We have a blue light. Oh my. Look at that. Come on. Come on, come on. Looks like it's booting up, doesn't it? Oh, here it is. Okay, so what I need to know is, is, I know the touchpad's working, but is the, uh, is the keyboard working? Yes, it is. Let's see if it's all working. One, two. One, two, three. I've got to keep deleting it, haven't I? Four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. Zero. So I need to get into this. Bear with me, I need to get into it. I want to do a keyboard checker to find out what's wrong. Is it just the on and off button? That would be kind of rare for just that to fail. But I suppose that is probably the most used button maybe on the keyboard, depending, maybe they didn't do much typing. But it's just weird for that one to fail and nothing else. So maybe it's been water damaged, maybe there's a whole bunch. So I'm just gonna to try to sign in as a uh, another user or something.
Right, annoyingly, this is locked by the previous owner, which is understandable, it was a working laptop. Now it's let me connect to my Wi-Fi, so most of the keys look like they're working anyway, but I wanna do a key checker to make sure they're all working. So what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to completely wipe this PC because I can't get into, obviously, something that is locked. You can see it's definitely connected to the internet because we are now on today's date. So what I'm gonna do is just click on it, and I am gonna hit this button down here, and then I'm gonna hold down the Shift key, and I am gonna to go to restart. And then let go of the shift key. And then I need to go into troubleshoot and then I can reset the PC. So I'm gonna to go to troubleshoot and then go to reset this PC and remove everything. And now I clicked on fully clean the drive and now it's just going through. So this has taken an eternity. We're at 32%, it's been probably around 45 minutes. If I'd known it was gonna take this long, I would've just left it and worked on the keyboard and then done this at the very end. But I'm worried now that if I was to interrupt this, I might cause damage and I might not be able to get it to work again. So I'm just gonna to have to let it run through for the next two or three hours. And then, uh, yeah, just work on the keyboard after that, which is a bit annoying. At long last, we are done. It took an eternity to get it all set up under my username and everything like that. But we got there eventually. I've gone onto a keyboard tester and get this. The seller of this must be so unlucky because every single button on here that I've tested is working. This keyboard tester will test everything apart from the on and off button and also FN. But FN button is working because if I go here and for example, mute, you can see it's coming up there and volume here. Yeah, so that is definitely, definitely working and every single button on here is working. You can see it coming up. I'm not gonna go across every single one, I've already done it. Yeah, every one of these lit up here. So the only button that's not working is the power button. I've tried holding it down again since then and it's not doing anything. So if, for example, the space bar had gone on one of the other buttons, the owner would have known that it was a keyboard problem and probably got it repaired. But when the power button doesn't work, you expect the worst and you think it's gonna be something major, but it's not, it's just a power button. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, shut this down and we have to try and take it apart. Annoyingly, it looks like at the bottom here, there's all little plastic wells holding in the back cover of the keyboard. So unfortunately in doing this, it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare, but let's take it apart just in case maybe I can just prise off the corner bit. I can't imagine it being anything too major. I was expecting to see a whole bunch not working. Then I would have thought it was water damage on this instance here, but it's, uh, it doesn't appear to be water damage unless it has just affected that one key. So let's shut this down. So what I'm thinking is, rather than undoing all of these, because what's gonna happen is they're never gonna go back on properly. I'm thinking about just undoing these few and actually folding this back to give me access to here. See if I can unclip the key. There we go. Right, so that's the power key off. And let's see how they've done it. Ah, right, so we have got access to the back of it now. Look. Well, it doesn't appear to be anything wrong with that whatsoever. So annoyingly, I can't see any damage underneath the on and off key. Also, the other bit of the exposed ribbon cable, I can't see damage on that. The bit that goes into the motherboard, that all looks perfect. So I've got no choice. I have to get to the membrane to follow these traces. I'm gonna have to cut every single plastic weld, take the keyboard apart in order to get to the membrane on the inside. It's a very destructive way of doing it, but there's no, no other way. If it was screwed together, it'd be a lot more repairable. But obviously, this is a cheaper way of doing it than having to put in 50 or 100 screws, just melt a load of plastic bits at once. It just means it's not very repairable. Anyway, we're gonna pick up the video now where I have the membrane out and we're gonna start measuring the, the tracks to see what the problem is. Well, there we go, start opening the book. So this is the membrane here that separates both of them, otherwise the key presses would be happening all the time. This one here. So I'm thinking where it's gone is probably gonna be the, the bend because that must be the weakest spot. It 
So remember, we're on this top key here now. So it goes, there is actually a few marks. Look at that there, there's a few marks going around here. I can't even see which side it goes on. I think it's this side here. And there's a few little marks here. Maybe, as far as the design's concerned, having the power going along the top one would probably be the most dodgy because any bit of water damage from the top side of the laptop is going to sit on here, isn't it? So, uh, what I mean is it's not good for any key to fail, but the power button makes the whole laptop completely, uh, completely gone. So look, it goes all the way through here, through here, and then all the way across. All the way across, along the top here. Ah, and then it joins the other side of that one. You know the one we were testing earlier? This is the other side of the, the on and off button. Goes down, goes across here, it jumpers that one. There's this sort of, sort of green tape there where it jumpers down and then goes down on here. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to get some sort of ohm read in between here and here. And this might highlight where the problem is. So let's just see if we're getting something between here and here. I've got to be careful because this stuff scratches really easy. Yes, I am. Eight ohms, yep. So now let's go further along. Let's go all the way to here. Yep, still getting something there. Okay, that's not good because I wanted it to be on this bit here. It'd be easier to repair. Okay, let's now move all the way along to here. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go on the button over this side, yeah? Ooh, we do not have anything. So now let's go here and here. Right, we have something there, yeah? So is it gone here, where it goes through the bend? I hope so, because at least it meant I had to take the keyboard apart. No, hasn't gone there. Oh, look, 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 look. Is that damage there? Let's see if it's gone through that bit. <gasps> yes. So is it going here? Yes, it is. You can see we're getting a reading there. Two ohms, so nearly a dead short. And this side between here and here. We're getting it. Just ignore that. And now from here, we're not getting it. This is where it's gone. This little bit here. Let's zoom right in. I'm so happy with that because it meant I had to take it apart. So there we go. It's around this area that's not traveling through. So I would say water damage. What do you think? I think yes. Brilliant. Well, that makes complete sense now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some, what should I do here? Copper tape or silver paint all the way along? Uh, I think I'm just going to do silver paint on this one. All right, so now let's do the good old fashioned continuity test. So if we get one probe here, you can hear that yes, 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 yes. No, here, it goes there, yeah. Nothing. Is this bit gone here? No. But nearly, you can see it's nearly gone. That bit's very nearly gone there. Right, brilliant. See, I love faults where you can 100% see. There's no arguing with that. There's no doubt in my mind. That's where it's gone, and the meter proves it as well. Brilliant. Let's get the silver paint on that, and then uh, I'm going to put a tiny bit of hot air just to make it dry quicker. It doesn't matter if I splodge it around everywhere because, look, there's no other tracks for it to short against, so it doesn't matter if I make a messy job. 
Okay, I haven't done a silver paint yet, but look here. It's not only there that's damaged. Look, this, this is discolored here. And have a listen on the inner one, yeah? Got it here, got it here. Got it. Haven't got it. Again, you can see that little bit there that's damaged. So, this might need uh, fixing up in quite a few places. So this is my cheap, nasty silver paint. Still haven't bought any good stuff, but I'm hoping it will do the job. And I'm just gonna cut off a tiny bit of Captain tape. And try and place it just over the good track. There we go, I can peel that off afterwards. So now it doesn't matter if I'm messy here because I can peel the tape off and obviously it's not gonna stick. So now with this stuff, it's kind of gone hard and horrible on me, but I'm just gonna put some on my mat and I'm gonna use tweezers to apply it. I only need a tiny bit. These things are only like 99p from China, so it's hard to moan at it not flowing very nicely because it's, uh, it's very cheap. but it will only be conductive when it's dry. Here we go, I don't care if it's messy. Let's do this one up here. So I'm just gonna get some heat on it, but only uh, the lowest my station will go. I think that's 100 degrees, and I'll keep it from a distance and only have it on there for a few seconds at a time. So now what I have to do is I have to check it from this point here all the way down to here and hopefully that will mean the ground is okay so third one along to here yeah 112 ohms so I presume that's going to be okay and now let's go from The fourth one along, one, two, three, four, all the way to here. I'm hoping this is okay now. Come on, give me a reading. Yes, go on. Okay, I think that's gonna be okay. So that is 225 ohms. I think that's fine. So obviously that would not set my meter off as far as con continuity is concerned, but there is still continuity in the circuit there. I think that that might be, uh, might be okay. I suppose what we could do is, could we double check what sort of reading we're getting on the one next to it? Mind you, the one next to it goes through to other ones as well because it's gonna be on the keyboard matrix. Now, I think we're gonna be okay with that. That wasn't there before and it's there, it's there now. So now I have the job that I was dreading and that is putting it all back together, every single key, and also trying to melt up each of those plastic welds again. So all those bits that I cut off, I'm putting back on top and then I'm irresponsibly using the soldering iron to probe down into it all and try to have one big mess of plastic melting together to try and give it some kind of strength. It's never gonna be as strong as it was originally, but what choice have I got? The only alternative is to buy a replacement keyboard. Now this didn't actually take as long as I thought. Once I got into the rhythm of putting the keys back on, they were quite simple. All you have to do is make sure you put on the one side first and then they clip down into place. So it's kind of hard to explain, but basically one side of them has a kind of hook and you have to hook the key under that and then the other side just clip down. And they're, they're, a lot of keys are faced in different orientations. So it's not always clip down on the left or clip down on the right. Sometimes you have to hook at the bottom and clip at the top or hook at the left and uh, clip down on the right. But it wasn't actually, it wasn't a bad job. It was quite therapeutic. In fact, I'll just show you a bit of the niceness of doing it right now. Looky here, I've become a professional. Watch this, look how quick I am. Boom, bang. 
Boom, bang. Boom, bang. Oh, taking them off was horrible. Putting them back on is joyous. And now that I've shown you that little bit of niceness, I'm gonna put the rest back together, give it a nice good clean up because although it's in very good condition, it is a little bit on the grubby side with the screen and stuff. And then the next time you see this, it will be fully back together. And hopefully I can show you the finished thing all working. So there we have it all back together and I've put the tape over the connectors and stuff. This is all back on so hopefully the heat will dissipate out. And uh, yeah, it's all looking relatively neat. Obviously not as good as it was previously. So what I'm gonna do now is put the back cover back on, just get a, a little wet wipe, give it all a nice good clean and then a microfiber cloth, get all the dirt and clean up the screen and stuff. And I'm thinking this will be a nice little laptop. So a couple of days have gone past now and it's given me an opportunity to use this laptop. Now let's talk about the positives to begin with. The power button is now working perfectly. Every single time, straight away, you don't have to hold it on for ages or anything like that. You just tap it and it does what it needs to do. The screen on this thing is surprisingly nice. It's nice and crisp, it's nice and bright, and it's nice and colorful. But that's really where it ends. Let's just get rid of that there. The, uh, if I'm honest with you, it's kind of unusable. The trackpad down here is infuriating. It doesn't seem to be very accurate. I've messed around with the sensitivity. The left and right click is only on the very small bit. At the very bottom, it needs to be a bit bigger. So what happens is when you're moving around, you go to click, you've accidentally moved the cursor. I'm well aware that you can tap and do that instead. But still, if you've got the option to click, it should work properly. The, uh, the Wi-Fi on this is just, that's the worst thing. The Wi-Fi on this is just awful it's barely usable i thought maybe it's because i've damaged the antenna or moved it in the wrong position but i've played around with it i've even hung it out of the laptop i'm still getting a bad connection i've even swapped it over to the nintendo switch one i'm still getting a bad connection so unfortunately i think this one here looks great and it certainly does look great it just in my opinion doesn't perform well whatsoever so uh yeah fix really enjoyed the fix just a bit of water damage which stopped the power button from communicating with the motherboard what a nice little repair so i enjoyed hunting that down and i thoroughly enjoyed the repair unfortunately though the product itself in my opinion isn't really that usable even though it looks fantastic i'm uh, i'm struggling with it big time but still this isn't a, a review video this is a repair video and it was faulty and it's now working fully which is uh, which is which is good as far as the repair is concerned so that is it hopefully i will have some more upcoming laptop videos as well they seem to be quite popular and also it's enjoyable working on them so uh, yeah long may it continue if you enjoyed this video give it a big thumbs up and i will see you shortly take care everyone